in this video I want to show you an important derivation which is uh, used in general relativity and I will uh, describe the most important parts of the derivation and if you want to dig deeper and have some more insights you can check out my course on general relativity where I investigate all the details related to this kind of derivation and I'm speaking about the following integral so when we want to derive Einstein's field equations from an action the action principle we have the following integral so we have more than one integral but in this case I'm only concerned with the part related to the Ricci scalar so it is the action related to gravity we have the Ricci scalar so we have an integral a four dimensional integral over the Ricci scalar then we have the square root of minus the determinant of uh, the metric tensor g mu nu determinant is a uh, negative so that's why we have this minus side in minus sign inside this uh, square root and then we have d for x so we have an integral of this kind in general relativity we are interested in the variation of this integral so the variation of this integral means signifies that we are actually interested in the variation of r square root of minus g this symbol here means that we are changes, changing just slightly the g mu nu tensor so we are perturbing this g mu nu tensor and that's what it means when we take the variation this can be written as the variation of the Ricci scalar times square root of minus g plus we have r and then here we have the variation of uh, the square root of minus g and we can also write the variation like this so we, have, we take the derivative of the square root of minus g with respect to g mu nu and then here we have the variation of g mu nu so basically this is simply delta square root of minus g now the Ricci scalar is equal to the contraction of the Ricci tensor with respect to the metric tensor so we have g alpha beta r alpha beta we can write it in this form and the Ricci tensor r alpha beta is the contraction of the curvature the curvature tensor so we have r gamma alpha gamma beta we can write it in this form so I will not get into the details but if you want all the details I provide them in my course on general relativity but you can also check out other courses or other sources of information of course you I don't want to sell you my course that's not the point the point is to show you the mathematical beauty of general relativity and that's why I'm really passionate about it it's a really beautiful and if you don't have let's say much of a background on general relativity you might be a little scared or you might let's say this might not sound as interesting as it is or as it should be in my opinion so I'm just trying to also have fun have fun while um, doing this derivation myself anyway let's skip this so we have r gamma alpha gamma beta we can write it in the following form so we have the derivative partial derivative with respect to lambda so in this case I'm just writing d lambda like this so it means that we are taking the partial derivative with respect to x lambda so the coordinates are the x lambda x lambdas x0 x1 x2 x3 or x1 x2 x3 and x4 so general relativity you have to get used to the notation in general relativity anyway here we have gamma which is the Christoffel symbol lambda beta alpha and then we have minus d beta gamma this is capital uh, capital gamma here we have lowercase lambda then we have lambda alpha plus and then we have a product of gammas so we have gamma lambda lambda gamma times gamma lowercase gamma lambda alpha minus here we have gamma and this is gamma lambda beta gamma times gamma lowercase gamma lambda alpha so this is quite complicated I mean quite confusing might be confusing 
but um, in any case, in a local frame, it is possible to show that these gammas here are zero. So this is basically zero because we are going to consider a local frame, and then using the properties of tensor, we can uh, of tensors we can get back to a general frame. So the um, the expression for the Ricci tensor in a local frame simplifies in this manner. And we want to take the variation of the Ricci scalar. So the variation of the Ricci scalar can be written as R alpha beta variation of G alpha beta plus G alpha beta variation of R alpha beta. So this is equal to R alpha beta delta G alpha beta then in a local frame we have plus g alpha beta and then we have d lambda variation of gamma lambda beta alpha minus d beta variation of gamma lambda lambda alpha now the advantage of uh, taking the variation of the christoffel symbol here is that this is a tensor it is possible to show it mathematically. I did it in my course on general relativity. We are not going to do it here. But you have to take into consideration the fact that the Christoffel symbol is not a tensor in general. But when you take the variation of the metric tensor, that's going to be a tensor, surprisingly. So it's quite surprising, but it is a, a mathematical result. So you can also derive it mathematically. So now we are going to rewrite it like this. We have R alpha beta variation of G alpha beta plus G alpha beta. Now we are going to get back to a general frame. And we can do that simply by substituting these partial derivatives with the covariant derivatives. So that's why it is useful to do this kind of um, step. Here, because we are going to a local frame, so we went to a local frame like this, but now this is a tensor, this is a tensor, we have these partial derivatives, and if we go back to a general frame, we simply have to substitute the partial derivatives with the covariant derivatives. So here I'm going to use this symbol for the covariant derivative, so we have covariant derivative lambda, here we have delta gamma lambda beta alpha, minus covariant derivative beta and variation of gamma lambda lambda alpha like this now taking into consideration the fact that the covariant derivative of uh, the metric tensor is zero we can also rewrite it like this r alpha beta delta g alpha beta plus here we have the covariant derivative with respect to lambda of g alpha beta variation of gamma lambda beta alpha and then we have minus now when we multiply this uh, g alpha beta with uh, this uh, tensor here we can rewrite it like this we can uh, rewrite this lower index beta as an upper index alpha and this is delta gamma lambda lambda alpha but now we can also rewrite this in the following form. So we can write it as del lambda, and then we have g lambda alpha delta gamma beta beta alpha. So I have changed this uh, dummy index lambda to beta, and I have put inside this uh, parenthesis g lambda alpha. And you have to remember the fact that you can also put this out of uh, the derivative because the derivative is not going to act on g lambda alpha because the derivative of g lambda alpha is zero. The covariant derivative of the metric tensor is zero. In this case, this is the inverse metric tensor, but that's the same. The, its covariant derivative would be uh, still zero. And now, once you do this, you can rewrite it like this, r alpha beta delta g alpha beta, then you have plus co covariant derivative lambda of g alpha beta delta 
gamma lambda beta alpha minus g lambda alpha delta gamma beta beta alpha. Like this. But now, what do we have here? We have a tensor, actually, because this is just a... I mean, this is a multiplication of two tensors, multiplication of two tensors, and then when we take the difference of two tensors, we still get a tensor. And this is W lambda, for example. Just call it W lambda. But now, when we take this covariant derivative del lambda, W lambda, so this is like a covariant divergence. And remember where we started. So we have an integral of this kind. When we take into consideration only this term, we have an integral of this kind multiplied by the square root of minus g d4x. It is also possible to show that uh, the covariant derivative here, the covariant divergence, and when we multiply it by the square root of minus g, we can write it as integral d lambda w lambda d4x. So this can be proved. And um, this does not hold, so this equality here does not hold only for a local frame, but it holds for a general frame. It's possible to show you mathematically, and I'm not going to do it here, but I have done it in my course on general relativity. And when you integrate, you have an integral over the boundary of uh, W lambda, and then here you have something like D3x. You have something like this. So this is just, I mean, this is improper notation because, uh, I mean, this is a scalar and uh, the result should be a scalar. So to indicate it properly, here you, you could put n lambda, which uh, indicates the orientation or the normal of this three-dimensional surface. So we're thinking about a three-dimensional surface because we started from a four-dimensional volume. But when you integrate, I mean, when you have to evaluate w lambda over the boundary, since we are considering an infinite boundary and w takes into consideration the metric tensor, well, the metric tensor will be constant at infinity. So it will be constant because there will be no masses which are going to perturb space-time. So also the derivatives of g will be zero. And the derivatives appear here because gamma contains derivatives of the metric tensor. So this result, this will result in a zero scalar. So this will be zero. The result of that integral will be zero. And this means that the variation of R, the Ricci scalar, can be simply written as R alpha beta delta G alpha beta. So when we take the integral, this part here, this term, will go to zero when you integrate. So you can just write down this expression here. And this is actually true only after you take the integral. And then remember that we also have to take into consideration, so we have taken care of this part, this variation, but we should also take into consideration now this part. So we have the derivative of the square root of minus g and the derivative of the square root of minus g with respect to g mu nu can be written as minus 1 over 2 square root of minus g. Here we have the derivative of g with respect to g mu nu. This can be written as minus 1 over 2 square root of minus g. And then here we have g times g mu nu with upper indices. So it is possible to show that this holds. It is easy to guess, I mean, easy to understand if you think about a diagonal matrix, g mu nu. But this holds also for a very generic matrix. And I have provided details for that in other videos and in another course. But Never mind. So this holds, and then here we can write one half square root of minus g times g mu nu. And now from here we get derivative of square root of minus g d g mu nu. Variation of g mu nu with the lower indices is equal to one half 
and then here we have the square root of minus g g mu nu variation of g mu nu but now since g mu nu g mu nu is equal to 4 so it is equal to a constant you can rewrite this product as minus g mu nu with lower indices times the variation of g mu nu with upper indices and you can substitute it once you substitute it we easily find the um, the following result so the variation of the integral of r square root of minus g d4x is equal to integral of r alpha beta minus one half r g alpha beta square root of minus g dg alpha beta d4x and this is a fundamental result a very important result in order to be able to derive Einstein's field equations from the actual the action principle and you can see that also from this term so this term is what appears in Einstein's field equations in order to derive the actual the actual Einstein's field equations you should also consider the part of the action related to matter so it is related to the stress energy momentum tensor but we are not going to consider that here I just wanted to derive this result and I want you to highlight the most beautiful aspects of um, the most beautiful mathematical aspects of general relativity I also like this derivation so that's why I wanted to introduce you to such a derivation in my in one of my YouTube videos